With many people social distancing during the pandemic, a lot of us have just been staying home. Which has led to a fair share of people wanting to refresh their space. That's why I reached out to Cassie Beach from Made with Grace and Grit to help me give my dining room a facelift and then share how to create the look. After taking the time to do some research, I decided a DIY board and batten would go perfectly. Take a look. Hi, Cassie. Thank you so much for coming over to my house and helping me finish this DIY board and batten wall. Of course. First, I just want to talk a little bit about what this wall is and looks like and why people create this. So it's just a great way to add an accent wall and add a little character to your home. Traditionally, the board and batten, there's a like quarter ply board behind, um, but a lot of people are putting it right on top of their drywall and their textured wall and then just using a lower sheen paint. So it kind of hi helps hide the texture. So we're gonna walk through the steps now to complete this. And I did some of this on my own before having you come over, but you walked me through this and you set me up for success because <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> and first we had a Zoom call for about an hour and we went through the measurements. So just yes. explain that aspect of it first. So first I had Brittany measure how exactly wide and tall her wall was. And then I kind of roughly figured out how many squares we would do across and how many squares we would do down. We ended up doing six up and five across because the wall is quite a bit taller. And then from there, we kind of knew exactly, I was able to figure out how many boards, the length of how many boards she would need and how many boards he would need. And we used um, pine um, just from any home improvement store. Select pine, not regular pine, because otherwise you would have a lot of knots where this is much smoother. Okay. So the select pine boards, after I got those, then the first step actually before even getting the boards, I painted the wall. Yes, yes. And I picked a color, I just picked this darker gray because it fits my home. And you recommended a certain type of paint, Bayer? Yes, Bayer Marquis from Home Depot. I really like that paint. It's a paint and primer, and it's supposed to have one coat coverage, so it's really good coverage. It went by so fast. I had some friends here watching me, and I was going and they thought it was gonna take me all night, but it really didn't, so that was great. So after that, I went and got the boards. Yep. And then I brought them all here. Mm -hmm. Then I painted them with yes. the paint. I did not have to use a primer. Nope. I thought I was maybe gonna have to, but it didn't need it. And then, so I bought the boards at a one by four by 12. Mm -hmm. And then I bought a bunch of one by four by 10s. But you have to obviously cut them. Yes. So tips for that. So kind of like I told you, for each board, I would measure it because if everything's not just perfect, uh, you can make sure that your board's the right length all the way through. And then um, I use a measuring tape, I use a pencil and mark my board. And then I always put an X on the opposite side so that way once I put it over to my saw, I know which side of the line to cut on. And then um, I use a miter saw for that. So just the kind of saw that goes down like this and up. Uh, you always wanna have your miter saw, let it run for a little bit before you pull it down and wear your safety glasses. After I had all the boards painted, the next step you led me to was trimming. So explain that part. Yep, so I just had you add all the exterior boards and we had you do the sides first because those were the tallest and then the middle, or the top and bottom. And then because we knew there was an odd number going up, it was easier to visually figure out exactly where your middle board was. And then from there, we kind of just divided it up. And as we've went through this entire wall process of putting the boards up, we've been carrying a level with measuring everything. And why is that so important? Yes, because you just wanna make sure that not only are they on the mark where they are supposed to be measurement wise, but that you don't accidentally have like one of these boards going down shifted off. Cause you'll be able to see that since it's a grid pattern. Right. And do you think the process that we did with putting the horizontal one in, doing all the horizontal ones first before these middle ones and then kind of mapping it out helps a lot? I think so, just because it was easier for us to calculate because that was the way that we had odd boards. So putting the boards on, you kind of had a system and recommendations of how to do this to make sure it stays and to make it the easiest way. Yes. So explain that now, what's the best way to put these boards up? So we had to use liquid nails and that's really the key in what is actually holding them up. 
but because liquid nails takes a while to set up and dry, I had you use a nail gun. So you put the liquid nails on your board, then you put it against the wall, hold a level to make sure it's level, and then a nail gun to tack it in. I did make sure that your nails were just long enough to go through the board and your drywall and not all the way through because we don't really know what is behind this wall. If there's water lines, you know, gas lines, anything like that. And we just didn't want, want to run the risk. You're not hanging anything big and heavy from these. It's just aesthetics. So that way that will hold it in place. And then when you nailed it, I had you do it up at an angle and down at an angle so that those nails go in at a wedge and that holds it in place better. And then there are some spots and we haven't even gotten to this part yet, but we will, the, the spaces in between, how do you fix that? So after the, so we have the bottom half of the wall done now. And then what you'll do next is you'll fill all the nail holes with a little putty and then caulk around all of the seams. So where there's any seams that there's a little gap, you'll put caulk all in there and then you'll touch up paint. It's just easier to paint everything beforehand than have to try to paint in all the crevices afterwards. Okay, so you, you put the caulk them and then you put putty in all of the nail holes. Yes. And then do you paint over it or how do then you Then you'll want to sand the putty a little bit. You don't okay. sand caulk, you just sand putty until it's smooth. Okay. And then because this is pine, like you already noticed, some of them have imperfections or where something's scraped against the board. Or it's not straight. Yep, or it's not perfectly straight. But you can hide a lot of those imperfections by just kind of looking back, letting light shine on it and putting some putty in those areas too and then just sanding it and then touching it up with paint. Okay, well I am so impressed and I am so happy with how this turned out. It is a lot more work than I imagined, but when you think about it, this is a pretty big wall and I just didn't know what to do with the space and instead of putting a bunch of artwork up or just painting it, I think this adds so much to my space and I'm so happy and pleased with it. So thank you so much, Cassie, for helping me walk through this process. Of course, anytime. I'm so excited still, but it also very thankful it's done. So good. And I yeah. really enjoyed helping you, and we're going to do my house now. Yeah, we yeah. got to. So I'm going to walk through a couple different ways that you can do a board and batten wall because it's not just the grid style like I did. So first up, this I love this look. It's the entryway. So yeah. adding it in with a couple hooks and then using that where you store your stuff. I think that is so cute. You can tell they did it in a different color, but you could keep it the same color as your wall. I do really like that. Our house is actually really old, so it, our dining room walls are like that. Already have But it. they don't have yeah. hooks on them, but it's very similar, a little different, and I was thinking about adding it to our front. Yeah, I think it'd be a great look. Yeah. And then this next one, they did it on the door. I like this that. is really good for a farmhouse look. Mm -hmm. And again, you could do the grid style or you could do horse, um going diagonal like they did. This is sort of a uh, herringbone mm -hmm. effect I like. Yep, mm -hmm. the herringbone is a very popular choice as well. And then this next one, the chevron wall is okay. kind of a popular one too, but yeah. you can do it different ways because you can have the chevron going separate ways or you can have kind of just boards going every different direction. I don't love the every different direction one as much. It doesn't, Without, it like, just, a structured it's like a little plan. bit too crazy, but I do like it when it's all going yeah. in a, you know, planned area. Mm -hmm. And then this last one, I love this, the half wall. And I actually thought about doing this in my dining room instead, but you do half the wall, pretend that top part isn't up there, but you do half the wall if you paint it gray. You could use a wood top part for finishing it, but and I don't those know. I like wood top walls are really nice for their picture rails. Mm -hmm. You can just put your pictures, but that's what we do in our right. dining room. So I like that the a lot. Yeah. Well, I can't wait till we pick mine. Yeah.